and welcome to episode 7 of Backpacking for Beginners where today we are going to be talking all about booking accommodation. Booking accommodation online or through apps is super easy and there are certain sites that myself and a lot of other travellers use to do so. These include Hostel World, Hostel Bookers, Booking.com, Airbnb and Couchsurfing. Links all below for those. When going to a new place, you may just want to book for a couple of days if you're not sure what the hostel's like or you're not sure how long you're staying. But occasionally you can get cheaper deals for booking a week or so at a time. I know this was the case for a lot of hostels in Australia. Don't worry, unless it's a peak season or a really busy season, you will always find accommodation. Some places are obviously very popular with backpackers and travellers and for these sort of places I do recommend booking in advance. If you're going to Australia, Byron Bay was a nightmare, I'm warning you now, and getting anything around Christmas or New Year, even six weeks in advance, was really difficult. If there's a lot of accommodation options available to you, you can just turn up and ask to have a look around before committing to staying there. You don't have to pay and just chance. It. Accommodation all over the world varies dramatically and specifically hostels will differ from one to the next. It really depends on what you're looking for from your experience, whether it is just budget backpack a place to sleep, whether you're looking for a party experience or a more relaxed environment or somewhere where you're going to meet new people if you're a solo traveller and you really want a social scene. If you're booking into a dorm room, dorms will be mixed unless you specify it to be in a female only dorm or a private room which will obviously be more expensive. I say this because having worked in a hostel, you would be surprised at the amount of people that didn't realise that dorms are mixed gender and were quite upset about it when they got there. So if you prefer to be in a female environment, make sure you book a female only dorm. So what do you look for when booking accommodation? My main thing that I look out for essentially is location. I want to be nice and central, in the middle of everything I want to do and easily accessible by public transport or walking. I look for secure lockers, free Wi-Fi wherever I am if possible. I want it to be a reasonable price, free breakfast because when you're traveling and you're on a budget, free food is always good. Laundry facilities or somewhere nearby where I can do my washing. If I'm staying in a hostel, I always try to make sure that there's a kitchen on site because it is always cheaper for me to cook in batches than eating out all of the time. In some countries this won't be the case if you're in a cheaper country like Southeast Asia. It's probably equally as cheap to eat the street food. If the hostel you're staying in has a bar, check out their alcohol policy. I know in Australia, often if there was a bar, you weren't allowed to bring your own alcohol in. So nights out and drinking became a little bit more expensive. But the benefit of having a bar is there is that social scene as well. However, if you're not a party goer, it can get a bit rowdy. Most places you nowadays don't need paper confirmation. Your name and the date you're staying are usually enough along with any card you've used to make the booking. Some places require a passport to photocopy and they will also want credit or debit card details in case you trash the place. They won't take any extra money from you but just be prepared that they will ask for those things. If you're not using a paper confirmation you can save the email on your phone and just bring that up if they do require it or do a screenshot of the booking reference if necessary. If you're traveling in a country that isn't speaking your native language I do recommend writing the address down if this is in an alphabet that is different to your own, try to take a screenshot of the address. This just allows you to show taxi drivers the address in their own mother tongue and you will get to your destination. If you're having language problems, another option is buying a cheap SIM card, ringing your place of accommodation and getting them to speak to the taxi driver directly so that you get there 
to the correct location. When I book accommodation, I always check out reviews. I do find that reviews on TripAdvisor are generally a little more accurate than on Hostelworld or Booking.com or any of the other sites. So I try to look at them, look at the prices and then head over to TripAdvisor. I'm not affiliated to TripAdvisor, but I just find them to be most useful. There's always travelers photographs, so you can sort of see the level of hygiene and things like that as well. If you're not booking in advance, obviously, like I explained, you can check it out. So reviews may not be necessary necessary but it's always good to have a little look and see what you're getting yourself into. This really is the bare bones of booking accommodation. I hope it's been helpful. If there's any questions you have, please put them in the comments below. Or if you have a specific video relating to accommodation or anything else that you want me to cover, let me know. I am here for you. That is what I want to do is help you and advise you as best I can to aid you in your travels. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Also, make sure you check out my blog, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook page. All the links are down below. I will see you next Friday for episode eight of Backpacking for Beginners, where we will be looking at creating a packing list and what to take with you. I'll see you next Friday. Until then, big love, stay safe, have fun. Bye. Or repatriation. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. And that essentially means being returned to your country of origin. Hopefully that's alive, not dead.